Hey everyone, I'm back with another KSP tutorial. Today it's going to be the basic tutorial for building a moon base and of course building your rovers. So let's start off with the basic stuff. Of course to get a moon base you need to be able to move around your actual modules that you'll build and your actual rovers. So two things to keep in mind. If your rover is going to be built with a manned module, that being any of these, uh, it automatically produces the electricity so you shouldn't be afraid of the electricity running out so don't worry about that but in case if you're gonna make a, a rover with the unmanned modules that being these then you will need to obviously attach a solar power and a battery as well to make sure that the rover has continuous power if the rover ha doesn't have continuous power it uh, will not work the RCS will, will not work pretty much nothing will work if the electricity runs out so that's uh, the first thing to keep in mind now, the second thing to keep in mind when you are building your rover, let's go to the wheels, wherever the hell they are, are here. So you have a rover wheels, that being one, two, and three. You have three types of wheels. Now, each of these wheels produces, you can say, resource consumption rate and requires electricity. Each of these uh, wheels has its own small little motor equipped with a built-in motor. You see the, the actual uh, description says. Now... The cool thing is when you build a rover, you don't need to actually uh, have a fuel and an actual uh, liquid engine or anything on it because the actual wheels have an electric engine and they can actually move by themselves. Now, the disadvantage with having rover wheels instead of your standard wheels, for example, you could put these standard small airplane gear wheels or whatever, is that with the airplane gear wheels, there's no actual speed limit. But with the rover wheels, you do have a speed limit. Now, over, of course, if you exceed that speed limit, the wheel itself will deform and you will crash and hopefully die if you're going fast enough. So the cool thing to keep in mind is that these three rover wheels, of course, have their own electricity and have their own motors. So all you got to do is supply electricity and motors, which in turn is a great advantage because, uh, as I mentioned before, you don't have to burn any fuel. So as long as you have solar panels and you have enough uh, batteries uh, stored, you can continually charge your batteries once you're out of power because you're using your rover wheels. And if you don't want to use even your solar panels, you can put in a lot of these uh, radiostope thermal electric generators and generate enough power from your generators, which will obviously keep your batteries charged, which in turn will obviously keep your motors and you can continue moving as quickly as possible. Just make sure to uh, check what the speed limit is on uh, each of these wheels I'm sure later on the new upgrades updates for this game will have more maybe various types of wheels and make sure you don't over exceed the speed limit the land speed limit for these actual wheels themselves and this sort of pretty much uh, finishes off our uh, basic stuff in terms of how to build the rovers now let's go down to how do we actually build a uh, moon base well first thing the most important thing you're gonna need a sort of a tug tug truck or uh, tug ship or whatever the hell you like to call it here this is my little tugboat and uh, now the tugboat uh, the the key thing is to uh, for it to be able to of course dock with uh, the uh, the component or the module that i dropped or that i delivered to that planet and uh, obviously pull it to its target location and dock it now before you start building a moon base what i would highly recommend is you test building your components that being your tugboats and other components and modules build them on Kerbin like you see here I have my components I test them out on Kerbin and then I actually send them to uh, to the moon and stuff so always build your components on the moon and always go to the night and check it out at night and make sure everything is fine because you'll be surprised how many things you'll forget for example ladders you'll forget test it out make sure you uh, go out of your actual uh, cockpit move around and uh, move up and down and make sure that uh, everything pretty much functions because it's, it's it's pretty embarrassing if you end up sending your module or component that you just finished uh, building all the way up to the moon and then you realize you just don't have the power or you forgot your RCS or you forgot to put on your lights or something because that, that has happened to me quite a bit so that that's first thing when you are building your components make sure you build them first on Kerbin uh, assemble them on Kerbin just to make sure of course later on when you're more experienced you don't even have to waste time but it does uh, prevent from uh, stupid stuff like that happening that you forget to place something on your actual module and you only realize that when you deliver now uh, another cool thing is uh, when you actually build these actual modules and they are on wheels uh, people uh, tend to do two different things when they're building these things some people like to build them on wheels most of them maybe like to put them on you can say uh, 
stilts. So if you have stilts, you can put them on stilts as well. So it really depends on what you like. You can have small wheels and then load them up on stilts and attach them together. And you have the whole base, you can say, a little bit elevated off the ground. So that's really depending on to you. Now, the only reason why I have my stilts here is because I use that to maybe reach a docking port which might be lower and a docking port which might be higher. So that's really the only reason because I'll only raise or lower one of the sides, never both. Okay, that's really to get every possible angle to all the docking ports that I might have. So uh, that that's another cool thing in terms of this. And uh, now for the main thing in terms of when you're designing your components, make sure that all the docking ports, that being this one here and this one here, are pretty much on the same level. You know, so uh, I pretty much know that if I build anything and if I stick a plank on it and a one wheel and the wheel is stuck on the plank and that plank is stuck on the ground, that that's pretty much the same level. Of course, it doesn't need to be exactly on it, but as close as possible. You can always raise it and lower it with your tug ship and put it into place. And of course, the next thing you should make sure is that your actual component has two docking ports, the one in the back and one in the front, because uh, if you forget to do that, you will dock it to your actual component which is on the moon and then you realize you can't dock anything to it so uh, check make sure to check that as well because uh, uh, that that comes in handy in terms of building up your components just to show you this is my actual radio tower that I built here and uh, I will be planning to sending it to the moon once the update for resources comes out till then I won't really be wasting my time playing this much so uh, ah, and a cool thing is if you are building a wheel based uh, wheel based uh, base if you hit the brakes here, it's pretty much handbrake, so it doesn't move. So even if you switch to other other components or other ships that you have, it'll stay handbrake. It means the actual thing won't move. So this is my radio tower. As you see, it comes equipped with uh, satellites on both. This is for my interplanetary communications. This is for uh, the local communications. And then I do have standard antennas for maybe FM and AM signals coming about. And of course, uh, my lights, which are uh, lighting up the actual thing itself. I do have a couple of generators. doesn't really need that. And I do have a couple of batteries as well, just in case for uh, storage. So um, that, that's pretty cool. And this is my uh, habitat module, which is here. I do have three Cobras and it has, of course, lights on top as well. So we can attach this to that. So it's, it's really good practice to make sure you attach these co components on Kerbin. And then once you do that, it's really, really easy to send them to the moon itself. And uh, I'll show that, I guess, in the advanced one as well. And um, I think this pretty much it is for the basic one. Another cool thing that I'd like to show you when you are building your components, let me actually load up my uh, one, one of my, uh, you can say, the, the tugboat. Uh, another useful thing when you are building your components, for example, the lights, I pretty much tweaked it to make sure that the light is perfectly arranged, especially when it came down to my radio station. Remember, if you if you remember, did you see the lights? They were uh, perfectly arranged in the fact that it uh, pretty much covers exactly uh, the location that it needs and not everything. Now, uh, uh, let's just take a look. You see the actual light coverage is literally as perfect as it can go. Obviously, it can be a little bit better. I can maybe move this light a little bit more to the left, but it's not crisscrossing each other. Now, how I managed to do that, it's uh, pretty easy. If uh, you're actually building these components, a cool thing to keep in mind is the keys. If you hold down the shift key when you select a component, for example, the light, okay, and if I hold down the shift key and then I use W, A, S, and D, I move it by five degree incre increments. So watch this. See how little it's moving by? Yeah, so this is very, very useful. Hold shift and use W, A, S, and D. And this pretty much, of course, applies to everything. Antennas, uh, components, wh whatever can clip on anything. If it allows you to do that, you can use the hold the shift key and use W, A, S, and D. And this, this, this is, I think, is really key in terms of being able to build your rovers and components for you to be able to dock to each other. So that, that's pretty cool. And uh, I think I'll end it on this and show you. When you do right-click the actual wheels, you do see you have the lock steering, disable motor, and invert steering. So keep that in mind as well. And always make sure that your docking port actually manages to, to dock with your target capsule. So remember, before you actually send any new module into space, make sure you test it out on Kerbin. Make sure it actually docks so the actual, you can say, uh, uh, you can say the, the, the actual... Uh, uh, docking modules between uh, both the tugboat and the actual modules that you're trying to dock to each other actually work. So now the cool thing is if you do have, uh, like in the sense if I do have uh, already wheels, that's the cool thing, th then all my modules are uh, mobile. So I don't really need to uh, 
tug them or pull them to their location. So maybe they'll create later on uh, wheels that pretty much don't have motors in them and they'll be much lighter. But uh, till then, I do prefer to uh, to uh, what do you call it? Open control, control from here. I do prefer to uh, to use uh, wheel wheel base wheel bases, even though I don't supply them as you see with solar panels. For example, this component I didn't supply it with solar panels, but uh, I did supply it with a couple of batteries as well. So now hopefully it should dock. And uh, there we go. Now we have two modules. So now what I can do is switch off the lights, switch on the lights. And now we have more lights. We have, of course, lights on the side and lights on the top. And uh, my communications module is connected to my habitat module. And of course, you can do more. Uh, sure the, I'm sure the updates will have a much more uh, cool modules that you can create and attach medical, you know, agricultural center, you know, maybe some habitat and stuff like that. And uh, this is pretty much for the basic stuff uh, in terms of how to actually get your rovers built up, uh, what to think about when you're building your rovers as uh, just to summarize it. Make sure that the docking ports are on the same level. Make sure you test it out on Kerbin. And uh, make sure that if it's an unmanned uh, capsule on the actual rover itself or on the module itself, make sure it has its own power source, that being either batteries. And if you're planning to use it for a long time, either solar panels or generators themselves. So uh, that's pretty much it. And uh, as always, happy gaming and see you guys in my advanced one, where I'll actually describe... Uh, the different uh, methods of uh, getting or different methods of actually constructing your base and getting to your actual base, wherever that may be. Take care. Bye.